The question 2 is to find absolute extreme of a given function. If you're thorough with the question 1, especially the uh, functions with x to the power 3 or higher, it's the same method what we will do now. Here we need to find the maximum or the minimum points. They occur at critical numbers. So first we need to find the critical numbers of a function. That is f dash of x. Here we will have 3x squared minus 3. That's it. Now f dash of x becomes 0. It will be 3x squared minus 3. Now we put in the calculator. After going to mode 5, 3, you have to put in the coefficients. Coefficient of x squared is 3. There is no coefficient of x, so it's 0. And last, the constant term is minus 3. The answers are x is 1 and minus 1. So the critical number is x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 1. Now here, we need to solve for the absolute extrema and minima. It's only possible when it's a closed interval. Because now here, we are just dealing with this interval. Here, now, in a closed limit, the critical numbers will not just be the x values, even the limits, intervals over here as well. So the critical numbers x will be 1, which falls inside this interval, 0 and 2. So we need to find f of 1, f of 0 and f of 2 and find which is maximum, minimum. The maximum would be the absolute max and minimum would be the absolute minimum. Let's take our calculators and find the max and minimum points. All you need to do is type in this equation and then calc at all these values. Calculating 1, you will get minus 1 as the value. At 0, we get 1. And lastly, at 2, we get 3. So this was minus 1, 1 and 3. This is absolute minimum. And over here, we get maximum. Same thing can be tried over here in the next interval. It's just that the critical numbers, I'll write CN, critical numbers will be minus 3, 2, 1, minus 1, because minus 1 also falls in this interval. So you will have to do f of these three, uh, sorry, over here there is no 0. You have to do f of 1, f of minus 1, f of 3, minus 3, and f of 2. So these are the four functions you need to do. Here, all you need to do is calc at f of 1. It is minus 1. Calc at minus 1. We get 3. I'll just write it out over here. We get minus 1, 3. And calc of minus 3 is minus 17. And lastly, calculating at 2, we get 3. So here we got minus 17 and over here we got 3. So the maximum points are two points. 3 and 3 both are maximum. So this and this would be absolute maximum. And the absolute minimum is at f of minus 3. So this is how we basically solve these problems. You can see over here we had got absolute minimum. I've just written minimum but they have clearly mentioned absolute minimum. Uh, that was at which was the value we got f of 1 yes f of 1 is absolute minimum and f of 2 is equal to 3 is absolute max same over here we got two absolute max and one absolute minimum you can do the other problems by yourselves the method is just the same each method is each step is worked out over here and uh, here i will quickly tell you one important thing we can just derive it by using power rule but here you get it in terms of denominator now, here you don't make it equal to 0. Why? Because this is undefined, right? If you make x is 0. But critical numbers are not only when derivative is equal to 0, also the undefined numbers. So this is undefined point and that is also a critical number. So x is x equals 0 is a critical number. And then for the first one, we have to take these two intervals. But does 0 fall within this? No. So we just take minus 4 and minus 2 for the part A. See, it's only minus 4 and minus 2. Why? Because 0 doesn't belong here, right? Since it's not writing, you don't need to write all that. Just find, derive it, you will understand critical number is 0, leave that. Just substitute minus 4 over here instead of x and put minus 2 instead of x and get the values. See which is maximum, which is minimum. 
same thing here but here the zero is within this interval so all three values you need to substitute and solve so you'll get it and over here you will get zero when you put over here you'll get zero minus one will be one and over here you get more than the three uh, when you put three it'll be three to the power two by thirds so which is the maximum obviously three to the power two by three and minimum would be zero so that's how we solve it okay i will do this one it's about sine x and cos x so first is derivation f dash of x what is the derivation of sine x it is positive cos x but cos x derivation is minus sine x now make this equal to zero cos x minus sine x now i will take this to the other side sine x is equal to cos x when is sine x and cos x equal if you remember the unit circle or if you know the values of sine and cos they are equal at 45 degrees right that is pi by 4 so that is the answer x is equal to pi by 4 because pi by 4 now since they have given in intervals in the limit and then we can easily this will be included in the limit over here and it's uh, not included over here so that's how we solve it but how do you do it in the calculator i'll show you now first thing clear your calculator here now i always tell use radian mode when you're solving sine and cos but here don't go to use radian mode because if you use radian you're not going to get in terms of pi it'll be like 0 0.55 something like that i will show you uh, now sine x right alpha x just equated to cos x see now i'll press shift and solve okay now it's in degree mode so i got the answer directly but i'll change it to radian mode four now i will shift and solve now see the thing is the once i get an answer you will get an error so now clear the calculator please do clear your calculator when you're using trigonometric equations now i should get the correct answer see sine x equals cos alpha x but first i will change this to radian mode shift mode 4 now i'll press shift and solve and equal to the answer is 0 0.785 you might be wondering what is this but this is ex actually pi by 4 look here if i solve pi by 4 i'm getting this answer it is 0 0.785 so the problem is if you get 0 0.785, you won't know what exactly it is, right? So I'll quickly clear the calculator. Keep it in degrees. Solve sine x equals cos x. Shift and solve. Here, whatever the answer you get will be in degrees. That's fine, 45. Now just divide this by 180. You will convert to radiant mode. Now this is... You have to multiply pi over here. So 1 by 4 pi or pi by 4 is in terms of radians. Or it's very easy to know. Pi by 2 is 90 degree. Pi means 180 degree. So 45 would be pi by 4. That's how we can understand. And now 1 fourth pi falls within this range. So we have to use here the critical number 0, 2 pi and pi by 4 and solve for maximum minimum. But in the second case, look, it's pi by 2, 2 pi. We don't use this pi by 4. Critical number is not in this range. Now, to find the absolute maximum or minimum, you need to put the critical numbers in this equation, isn't it? But remember, change the mode to radian. And now, calculate at any value you want. 0, you'll get the answer 1. Now, calculate at 2 pi, you'll get the correct answer. It's 1 again. So, you can see f of 0 was 1, f of 2 pi was 1. What about pi by 4 calculate pi by 4 just press shift and this symbol pi divided by 4 um, the answer is root 2 or 0 1.41 so this is how we solve it up so please make sure when you're checking the absolute maximum minimum put this original equation make it in the radian mode and then solve it up that's how we can do it the worked out solution is available here See, all the problems are straightforward. Now, here, when you derive it, please remember, sometimes you will you have to do chain rule. Sometimes you might have to do product rule or quotient rule. And then just the same method. It's an easy, easy problem. Here, we are using product rule of derivation. So, please look over here. That is u dash v plus u v dash. And then you can solve it. And here, we are using quotient rule. 
because you can't just simplify this further, you need to use the quotient rule and solve it out. So this is tan inverse x. What is the formula of tan inverse x? It's 1 by 1 plus x squared. Use the formula and then solve it up. Again, these are all straightforward. Once you derive it, make it equal to 0. You can just put this entirely in the calculator. You'll get the answer. Or here it is very simple. If you take this to the other side, everything becomes 0. 2x is equal to 0. x is 0. So this is simple. But otherwise, you can just put this in calculator. If your calculator is not giving you correct answer, please clear it out and then try solving it. Yeah, also it's again straightforward problems. Just that you have to use quotient rule and here as well quotient rule and then solve it out. That's the end of this topic. Please try and solve more problems by yourselves and any doubts or any difficulties, please post them in the comments.